하나님, gracious and loving God, we prepare ourselves for worship. Now I am here alone, but you are with me, and all of our church family will be with me by the power of the Holy Spirit. Bless this time, stay with us and among us, and help us find hope in you. As we prepare ourselves for worship, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
இது காம் Good morning at birth of friends and families. I miss seeing you in this sanctuary, but I'm so glad to see you. Yeah, computer went out, but it will come back shortly. I will welcome everybody here. I can see Claudia is here, Martha, Sandra, Stephanie, and Body West. Also, it said four other people are watching with you. So I'm so glad to see you here and I welcome everybody. Uh, yeah, uh, before as we are waiting for the computer, I have a few announcements. We have this online service. Uh, many people ask me if we have something happening. No, just in you know, Dana Kellum, our lay leader, and I prayerfully watch the increasing number of COVID cases in Northampton County. Also after Thanksgiving break, we discern that, prayerfully discern that it would be good to have the pause, the in-person service, but continue to worship through online. So glad to hear, see you. I see Ivan and Dory Smith and Donna Kellum. Good morning. So few announcements to hit here. Our Christmas service will be next Sunday at 11. Uh, it will be a beautiful service. Also, as we have the, the season of Advent, our theme this year is Christmas with the mothers. So please send the Christmas picture of the mother, you know, as yourself or your mother or a mother-in-law and any person you consider them as your mom. Also, Bible study will start on Tuesday at 7 p.m. over Zoom. I am planning to email to everybody who signed up for the Bible study. Oh, the lastly, Christmas poinsettia order needed until next Sunday, this, not next Sunday, uh, but the following Sunday, December 12. So you can bring the check to church or send your check with the memo Christmas poinsettia. The cost is um, $8. I see here Amber <laughs> and yeah, Tana and Rani again. Yes, I am in church. Let's prepare our heart with our opening hymn. Miss Natasha made a beautiful opening hymn. We cannot miss this. <laughs> yes, oh, come on. Yes. Sins relieve. 
Yes, one more announcement. Yes, Dana, uh, our lay leader, want to make sure we are pausing in person service only today after Thanksgiving break. But we will resume in person service next Sunday. We will have Christmas service, of course, in person. Uh, that's a beautiful service, but we can make that service with your presence. And hi, here I can see Kate Dottry and Pat Carey and Ron Johnson. Welcome to Apples. As we prepare our heart, uh, we will light the candle, Advent candle. We light this candle. I really realized how we appreciate our acolyte. <laughs> it was very tall. But we light this candle as a symbol of Christ, our hope. May the light sent from God shine in the darkness to show us the way of salvation. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Would you pray with me? God, Emmanuel. You are the God who is with us. We praise you and bless you for the gift of your Son. Your Son is the true light of the world who enlightens everyone who are in darkness. So Lord, in this time of worship, may all who receive Jesus and believe in his name, be born anew as beloved children of your redeeming purpose. In Christ's name, we pray together. Amen. The Jesus said, unless we become like the little children, we cannot get into the kingdom of God. So this is a time to invite our children and all God's children. So children, please come to the monitor and show us God's kingdom. So as children, I believe you are here. And shall we close our eyes? Stay in silence for a few seconds. and feel the presence of Jesus Christ who loves you so much. Now, open your eyes. <laughs> Can you say hello, Jesus? <laughs> so, children, today, can you see the sanctuary is different? I have a purple stall. And we do have purple candles here. And can you see the beautiful picture of Mary and baby Jesus? Today is a new year at church. I know we still have in December in the world, for, but for at church, we celebrate the new year because we remember Jesus who came this world just like us as human. And we have the name of this season, Advent. Yes, that big word, Advent. Now you remember that. Every year, one of our favorite things to do in the first Sunday of Advent, to set up this Advent candle, uh, this morning, yesterday, and throughout the week, Mr. Berkeley Ashby and Mrs. Maxine Ashby helped me to have this candle and blessed us with all these greens here. We may not have that beautiful uh, Advent candle, but just like we did every year, although I am here by myself, I would like the Advent candle with you. When you come next Sunday for your Sunday school, Miss Amber uh, will prepare this you know, Advent kit. And you will have your own Christmas 
Advent candle. But today I will show you how to make it. So it's very easy and simple. You can just place the candle plate here and we're going to place yeah, the candle. Yeah, this is purple candle. <laughs> we're going to place the candle of hope and candle of peace. and candle of love and the candle of joy and finally we will place this big Christ candle I don't have a beautiful green like that but I put some I brought some green papers here <laughs> so that we can have green too yes And for you, if you, I mean, in your garden, you have many greens, like a pine, you know, some beautiful greens, and you can put this green from your garden too. Okay, how about this? <laughs> so next Sunday, when you come and make this candle, we are not lighting all of the candle one day. As you remember, we will light the candle week by week. And today, as I said, this is a candle of hope, which we believe, we believe that Jesus is our hope. So we will light this candle here. And then uh, whenever, you know, you, you, every day when you see the light this candle, remember Jesus is our hope. And have a time to talk to him, your prayer time. That's the beautiful way to start Advent. Shall we pray together? Okay, close your eyes and hold your hands. Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, we thank you for coming to this world and we wait for you in this season of Advent. This week, help us the light of your candle, the hope candle in our heart, and always be happy and speak to you and listen to you. In Jesus' name, we pray together. Amen. So friend, listen to the word of God. Today the word of God comes from Acts chapter 1, verse 1 through 14. This is the ascension of Jesus. So, when disciples had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time that when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? And Jesus replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the end of the earth. When Jesus had said this, as they were watching, Jesus was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken off from you into heaven, he will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. 
Then they returned to Jerusalem. They went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to pray. Together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. This is the word of God for the people of God, and thanks be to God. As we continue to worship, I see here uh, more people come here. You know, Dory Smith want to uh, ask us to pray for uh, you know, Travis, Pastor Travis. We will do it. And Lisa, Joyce, Gail, and Apple's UMC, and Amber, Ayersman Air again, and Joyce, hello, and Kaylin Truer, and Tom Pat, and maybe with John Pat they are watching with us. So welcome to Everest again. And as we are ready to listen to the word, would you pray with me? Oh Lord Jesus, we thank you so much because you are our hope. It seems like there are many things that we can do and we can find the hope, but in you, there is hope. When our plan didn't work, your plan worked. When we feel like we have nothing, we have everything in you because you are our hope. This time, as we pay attention to your word, speak to us by the power of the Holy Spirit. Open our heart, mind, soul, ears, and eyes so that we can find hope in you. Let the word of my mouth and meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you. Rock, our rock, our redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen. So, Advent, <laughs> what a beautiful name we wait for. As I told our children, the Advent is the name of the season we start today. Um, this is the beginning of the new year, so I got a text from my pastor friend saying, Happy New Year this morning. So the same to you, our Christian brothers and sisters, you have the blessing in this new year. Advent means coming and arrival, and in the Greek and Roman time, they used this word for the arrival of the king. So in this season, beginning a new year, we are waiting for Jesus Christ, our king. We are waiting for the arrival of our savior. So on this first Sunday of Advent, indeed we had a beautiful plan. A plan to set up a Christmas tree here and plan to set up all of Christmas here so that our church families and friends still keeping social distance and wearing masks, but find a way to decorate our Christmas tree. It is a beautiful plan and beautiful tradition that has blessed efforts over 20 years. However, today, <laughs> our plan didn't work out. I mean, I can see some Christmas the setup the here, but I don't have you in person here. Also, I don't have a Christmas tree yet. I believe many of you already have that. Not my house, though. <laughs> The Christmas service is postponed to next Sunday. 
And this happened when Dana Kellum, our lay leader, and I as a pastor became aware of the increasing numbers of the positive COVID cases. We, we prayed for you and we prayed for our church family and discerned to put in-person worship only today, but still we can have online worship service today. And frankly, it could have been a little bit disappointing for me and for us because when we had to change our plan, it's not fun. But this time, it was not disappointing at all, at least for me. And hopefully the same to you. In 2020, we as a church have experienced so many challenges. And there were so many times we planned something and it didn't work out. That happened a lot in our life, but in 2020, we experienced that more often. However, whenever our plan didn't work out, we learned God's plan worked. God's grace and God's provision have led us until today. And we learn to humble ourselves and trust God and find hope in God. So today, as we worship together, shall we humble ourselves, trust in God? And shall we find hope in God, just like Jesus, the Son of God, did throughout his life in this world? And like his mother Mary, who witnessed the living God through her son Jesus Christ. We want to do that, especially in the season of Advent. That is the meaning of Advent. In Advent, many times our ears, our eyes, you know, our ears hear more story about Jesus in Bethlehem, and our eyes are more focused on baby Jesus like this in Bethlehem. But this year, God has a different plan. <laughs> God is inviting you and me to hear the whole story of Jesus Christ as a baby, as a boy, and as an adult. And this time, we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a backward time travel which means we will meet Jesus as an adult first, and then as a boy, and then finally as a baby. And this didn't come from my brain, no. It came from the book I read, the Pastor Adam Hamilton's book, Not a Silent Night. That's what our Bible study group will start on Tuesday. And Reverend Adam Hamilton had a unique lens to see Jesus' life through the lens of Mary. And he started this weird time travel by meeting Jesus as an adult, as a boy, and as a baby. And Jesus' mother, Mary, is an important helper of our backward time travel. So today, as we start our first backward time trip, we're going to meet Jesus as an adult in his last moment in the world. Yes, that's what you hear from the Acts chapter 1. It is about Jesus' ascension, a glorious and powerful story. However, in reality, for Mary and Jesus, as Mary and as a mother and the son, it is the last moment together. And that's what, I don't think that's what Mary planned for. At the time, Mary would be about only 49 years old, and Jesus was 33 years old son. Yes, it is glorious to see Jesus in the cloud of glory and going up to heaven. However, friends, let's remember Mary. She was a human like us, and she was a mom like me and like many of you. 
And how can a mom happy when they know this would be the last moment in the world with their child? No, none of mom. It could have been bittersweet for Mary as a mom. But at the time, Mary listened to Jesus. And that's where she found hope. Because what Jesus told her reminded her of God's plan. In Jesus' ascension, there were two things Jesus told. The first was about the Holy Spirit. Just like we heard from Acts 1, you will receive the power of the Holy Spirit and go and be my witness to the end of the earth. That's the Holy Spirit. The second was about Emmanuel, means I am with you. And that's what we can hear from Matthew 28. Although we didn't read it, you remember this well. Because Jesus said, go therefore, make disciples in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. I will be with you to the end of age. The Holy Spirit, Emmanuel. Don't you think we heard these words somewhere? Actually, these words were already told in the very beginning of Jesus' story. When God's angel visited Mary, the angel told her about the birth of Jesus through her. At the time, Mary, as a young girl, said, But sir, I am a virgin. How can this be? At the time, the angel told her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. Another angel visited Joseph, the Jesus earthly father. And this angel also said, The virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Can you see the, this circulation of the Holy Spirit and Emmanuel beginning from his birth and continued even his ascension? Jesus Jesus and Mary, especially Mary, Jesus' mother, would surely remember these words when Jesus was ascending to heaven, when he said, Everybody, you're fine. I will be with you. Peter, James, John, even mom, I will be with you. But remember, receive the power of the Holy Spirit and become my witness. These words would help Mary to remember the gift of Emmanuel, the gift of Holy Spirit that Jesus brought to his people in the world. Truly, you and I know that Jesus was with people, everybody, the poor, the rich, the blind, the healthy, the oppressed, the hungry, the sinners, and so many people. But when Jesus When Jesus was with them, their life was changed. The poor heard the good news. The rich shared their possession with the poor. The blind recovered their sight. And the hungry were fed. The sinners were forgiven. That was the gift of presence, Emmanuel, and the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's where Mary remembered hope through the gift of presence, the gift of the Holy Spirit. And this hope helped her open herself to God's plan. God's plan for her was not to stay in a sorrow of loss, but God's plan for her was to have a new beginning with Jesus, who is present with her, who will be present with her by the power of the Holy Spirit. The hope of Jesus' presence changes Mary's life. 
As we heard today, Mary was with the disciples in Jerusalem. Then they were all consequently dedicated to pray until they received the power of the Holy Spirit. And according to church tradition, Mary lived at least more than 20 years, and she traveled so many places to witness the life and death and resurrection of Jesus and to support the church at the time. That was the power of the gift of Emmanuel and the power of the Holy Spirit. Friend, today, don't you need the power of the Holy Spirit? Don't you need the gift of presence, Emmanuel? I need, and I know you need. Indeed, we need these gifts from Jesus because we live in a world where we cannot find hope easily. Easily, we are challenged and discouraged because it is hard for us to find hope. Think about what we experienced this week. As I said, nothing goes as we planned. The Thanksgiving was different. The Christmas service was postponed. Now, some schools are already closed to protect our children, the staff. To our local businesses and many businesses in, in our country have been so challenged during this pandemic. Many friends and families have been in our prayers because of the danger of COVID-19. Indeed, nothing goes as we hope. And we find ourselves spiritually poor, hungry, blind, and sinful. That's why we come to Jesus, our true hope and God's best plan. Jesus, God Emmanuel, is speaking to you and me. He said, don't worry. I am with you. I will be with you forever. Receive the power of the Holy Spirit and continue to be my witnesses, my disciples. Can you hear this voice of Jesus Christ? If you can, now I invite you to open your hands and receive the power of the Holy Spirit. And with these hands, remember Jesus is with you. When you pray to Jesus, when you pray for someone or yourself or our families, or when you use this hand to make a phone call to someone who really needs Jesus' presence, when you write a card for somebody to bring Jesus' hope to them, or when you do good work with your hand to bring Jesus' presence, there is hope. So go with this Holy Spirit and go with this hope. May the Holy Spirit shine upon you. May Jesus Christ always be with you and you may feel his presence so strongly and intimately. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, people of God said, Amen. So this is the time to pray together. Um, if you would like to share the name you know, for the prayer time, uh, you can make a comment. I will include them. Or I will open the place of silence and you can lift up this name in our silence. Yes. <laughs> would you pray with me? O oh, gracious and loving God, we thank you for your loving presence with us. 
We thank you for the good news of Jesus, who becomes our hope, who becomes the best plan from you. Every day, there are many moments when we, are, we feel like we are far from you. We are easily feel helpless in our daily life, and we are easily exhausted, and we are spiritually and physically hungry for your spirit, and we are sick in our body and spirit, and that's when we feel far from you. Whenever we feel like that, would you please speak to us loudly? Would you please renew us by the power of the Holy Spirit? Would you please open our eyes to see you who is always with us? Lord, we lift up the joy as Caitlin and celebrate her 30th birthday. We give thanks to you and we also remember everybody celebrating birthday you know, Rani also has her birthday today. And everybody, if we remember their joy, this time we lift them up to you. Also, Lord, we lift up the friends and families who are in our heart. We lift up Wyatt Ewing, John Valenta, Owen Drollet and Pastor Rob Kelly, Pastor Travis Deloche, and we pray for our Lisa, Jaina, and Jennifer, Faye, Carol, and Sally. We lift up all the students and staffs in the school. Also, we pray for health care providers and all of our community workers, including the sheriff, police, and soldiers, and we pray for David and all of our brothers and sisters in prison. Also, Lord, in silence, we lift up all of names who are in our heart today. Oh Lord, as we lift up these names, whenever they feel like they are far from you, please speak to them right now and let them experience your powerful and healing presence. As we lift up these prayers, we pray together as our Savior taught us, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and power and glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the time to offer ourselves. No, today, today uh, it has my only it has only my uh, offering envelope here. But I know you will bring yours next Sunday or through mail. But as we have an empty plate. Maybe we can send the offering of a prayer here. I know we have been praying so many friends for so many friends and families for their healing and the longing heart for the healing of the world from this virus. So please send the prayer in this offering and we will lift up to God. People are
Oh gracious and loving God, we give thanks to you for all of the blessings from you, the blessing of a new life, the blessing of the birthday, and blessing of our families, blessing of our church, and blessings in our lives. And we remember that they are not from us, but from you. We give thanks to you and return the portion of yours. Lord, as we lift up this gift, the gift of offering time, especially our prayer for the healing of the world and the healing of our people, please bless them and use them for your kingdom. Remember all of givers to the giver of life, time, talent, and prayer, also their offering. And remember them, Lord, and bless them and use them for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, we pray together. Amen. I thank you so much for all of your spiritual and peaceful presence with me today. As we are ready to go, please receive the benediction. People of at birth and friends in Christ, go in God's grace. Whenever you feel like there is no hope right now, remember Jesus is your hope. Receive the power of the Holy Spirit and go with these hands of the Spirit so that you can share the gift of presence, Emmanuel, with those who need Christ today. In the name of Creator and Redeemer and Sanctifier, people of God said, Amen.